Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll be spending another 100 days in Terraria Calamity Revengeance mode. If you guys haven't watched the first 100 days video, please go check that out. Link will be in the description below. Thank you all once again, and enjoy. Alright, to kick things off on day 101 is a boss fight, and they are the Profane Guardians. This boss fight wasn't really that hard, because all I had to do was just run circles around them and just swing my sword, since the projectiles home in. When it got to about 50% health, it started releasing fire every time it dashed, but honestly, nothing really changed, so I, yeah, I kept doing the same thing over and over. After defeating the Profane Guardians, I got a Relic of Deliverance, which is pretty much a flying spear that shot me really far and really fast as well, depending on how long I charge it. Afterwards, I went down to hell to farm some more unholy essence to make the profane core to summon providence. Before I fought providence, I revisited the boss Astrum Dias, since I wasn't able to beat it last time because of my weapon, which didn't do a lot of damage. But now I have the Arc of the Elements. I'm not sure if I explained this or not, but the green bar at the top of my screen, that's my adrenaline. And whenever that gets filled up and I activate it, I basically do like two times more damage. After getting it to 50% health, it split into two, which made the fight really hard. Not only that, when its health got even lower, it started dashing at me way faster. There was just so many things going on on the screen. I have balls to worry about, lasers, and two enormous worms charging right at me. I honestly thought that I wasn't going to beat this boss because I was literally at like 20 health. I beat the boss and opened the treasure bag, but I didn't really get anything useful. So that was a bit unfortunate, but anyways, I expanded my arena at the hollowed biome and then I started the providence fight. This boss gave me one heck of a time. I tried killing it from days 102 to 107, but I couldn't even do that. I kept dying over and over and over again. So yeah, I needed to change something up. I did some fishing in the underground hollowed to get some chaos fish to make the rod of discord, which is going to be really useful for dodging attacks. I then killed Moonlord for some more luminite, and then I made the normality relocator. On day 108, I tried killing Providence again, but I died. I needed a better weapon, so at night, I summoned the frost moon, and then I got the north pole from the ice queen which I then used to make the elemental lance. So this was very unfortunate. I did end up killing Providence, but I forgot to press the record button. Um, yeah, I record in one hour sections or bits. So yeah, I, I just forgot. So sorry guys, um, but here it is again. I did throw away the loot I got from killing it just so it's like fair. Um, so yeah, the elemental lance was really strong and a lot better than the Ark of the Elements. With the Divine Geode, I ended up crafting the Morning Star and also the Galactus Blade. From days 111 to 113, I spent my time mining Yuli Bloom Ore that's now spawned in the jungle after I killed Providence. While in the jungle, I wanted to kill Pantera real quick, but then I accidentally uh, summoned a, a few queen bees. Um, but yeah, they were really like <laughs> no no problem at all.
On day 114, I killed Providence again for more Divine Geodes. I opened the treasure bag and got a really cool outfit, which I will be rocking until I find a better one. I made the exotic pheromones, if that's how you say it. Um, and then I went to the jungle and summoned the dragon folly. And this thing was just really, really annoying. It took me from days 115 to 120 trying to kill it. It was a really tough time. This thing was just really fast and the feathers and the barricades the barricades just trapped me in there and i forgot that i could just teleport out with my normality relocator so yeah i died quite a few times After defeating the boss, I made the Seeking Scorcher and then I went to hell to summon the Brimstone Elemental. Now, this thing is buffed up after the Providence was slain. It had a lot more health and the cycles were a lot faster for the attacks. The reason why I'm fighting this boss again is to get a mount from her. That's basically the UFO, but a lot better. It was now time to fight the Sentinels of the Devourer. So I went up to the sky and summoned the Stormweaver. I figured I'd fight this one first since it was the easiest in my opinion. I destroyed the first phase pretty easily, but the second phase kind of messed me up. I wasn't really used to it yet, and the new dash pattern or attack that it had was new to me. From days 122 to 130, I spent the time fighting all three Sentinels of the Devourer. I was able to kill the Stormweaver the second try. After the Stormweaver, it's time for Sickness. Now this boss, I died to a bunch of times. I just couldn't get a hang of him. With all his teleportation and uh, those flying or like tracking orbs. Until mid fight, I decided to just run all around him. Just going in circles and it ended up working really well actually. Last but not least, is the Ceaseless Void. I was gonna fight it, but I ended up triggering the Poltergast fight. So, yeah, I died. Um, but I did get it to 30% health, which is pretty good. Alright, now it's time for the Ceaseless Void fight. Out of the three, I think this one gave me the most trouble. I was able to beat all the phases except the last one. The last one is the hardest thing ever because there's just so many projectiles on the screen and a lot of balls let me tell you
Alright, so on day 131, after the Ceaseless Void was defeated, it was time for Poltergast, and with the portal gun, uh, it was actually really simple. Every time it dashed towards me, I would just take the portal and then attack it. So it really couldn't attack me. Um, the only things that could attack me were the orbs that were flying around. So yeah, pretty simple. On day 132, I made the Cosmic Worm to now summon the Devourer of Gods. The Banshee's Hook that I got from the Poltergast is a really good weapon since it can ignore immunity frames and go through the body. I was literally so close on defeating it on my first try. But, I choked. I decided to fight Calamitous before I attempted to fight the Devourer of Gods again. From days 133 to 135, I visited the Abyss to kill some Reaver Sharks and Eidolon Worms for some materials and weapons. I did however die. I needed a better way to breathe in the Abyss, so I made the Abyssal Diving Suit. I went back to the Abyss and killed some Eidolon Worms and some Reaver Sharks. I killed the idol on Worm and got the Soul Edge, the weapon I was looking for. I collected enough materials in the Abyss to make the full Omega Blue armor set, and there were tentacles coming out of my body. And these tentacles actually healed me, but the armor set gave me zero life regen. From days 136 to 141, I died a couple times. Just a few. <laughs> Maybe I would have beat it faster if I didn't wear this armor set. After defeating the Devourer of Gods, I used my Cosmo Light Bars to make the Elysian Tracers. I then fought Providence again, but this time in Hell for it to drop a specific item, but I realized that it was nighttime, so it got buffed up. After killing it, I made the Asgardian Aegis. I then made a Pumpkin Patch Farm to summon the Pumpkin Moon. The Pumpkin Moon and Frost Moon now drop Endothermic Energy and also Nightmare Fuel. With the remaining Cosmolite Bars and the Energy, I made the Stream Gouge. And this thing was an absolute beast against the Devourer of Gods. From days 144 to 146, I went to the jungle and farmed some mimics until I got the titan glove, and then I used it to make the elemental gauntlet. Afterwards, I killed the Devourer of Gods once more. From days 147 to 150, I went back to the dungeon to farm some phantoplasms. 
I then used the phantoplasms to make the god slayer armor. And this gave a huge boost to my armor. I went back to the jungle and killed the dragon folly for more feathers to make the dragon egg to summon Yaron, another really difficult boss. I noticed that there are now two projectiles that home in on me and I have to kill them, otherwise they're just gonna keep following me. I was doing fine until I ran into the tornado, so yeah that literally one shot me. After I died, I built an arena to make it easier to fight Yaron. From days 151 to 160, it was literally just <laughs> trying trial and error, trying to kill Yaron. It's been a while since I last played the Calamity mod, so yeah, I had to relearn a few things and get used to the attack patterns. Here. So after defeating Yaron, I opened up the treasure bag and unfortunately I didn't get any melee weapons. So from days 161 to 174, it was an absolute struggle. Without a good weapon, the Yaron second phase is just a nightmare and I died like a million times. So after finally defeating Yaron, I used the burning sky that I got from him to kill monsters from the solar eclipse. This weapon is definitely really good to kill monsters but not bosses. I needed to kill these monsters to get dark sun fragments to craft way better armor and weapons. I've also noticed that these guys were just like insanely tanky. Their health was increased a lot and also Mothlon was just like a second version of the dragon folly. On day 176, I went underground and started mining the Auric Ore. I then made the Celestial Tracers, which are the best boots in the game. Afterwards, I went to the Sulfurous Sea and got the Lead Core, which is needed to make the best armor in the game, the Auric Tesla Armor. I also killed the Poltergast some more to get more Ruinous Souls. After finally collecting all the pieces I needed, I then made the Auric Tesla armor. The Tesla armor set effect pretty much gives the effects from the other four armor sets. On day 177, I went down to hell into the arsenal lab to obtain the Murasama. And this weapon is literally the most broken thing ever, which I will be using for the Supreme Calamitous fight. After I got back up on the surface, I wanted to test it out on Yaron. I 
as you can tell, this thing just absolutely annihilates health from bosses or pretty much anything it hits. Although I won't be using it that much to hit Supreme Calamitous because the boss just stays a fair distance away from you, so you can't really hit it. But I will be using it to destroy the orbs. After the yarn fight, I made the Ark of the Cosmos and got ready for the last boss fight. Alright, so basically from days 178 to 197, it was just me trying to kill this thing. This is the hardest boss in the game. Like, I feel like it's a hundred times harder than Garon, so yeah, that's how hard it is, guys. And you cannot believe just how many times I've died to this thing. It took me many, many hours just to get even close to killing it. So... After failing a bunch of times, I decided to make the Exoblade and hopefully that'll turn things around.
Alright, and finally that whole boss fight is now over. And yeah, I felt so relieved after it. So I made the Nano Black Reaper and fought the Supreme Calamitous one last time. And this thing just... <laughs> I mean, look at it. That's just crazy, right? Alright, so on day 199, I took on the Old One's army to get the Dragon Egg, and then I made that into a Flying Dragon Mount. And there we go guys, we made it to 200 days in Terraria Calamity Revengeance mode. I just want to thank you all for watching and supporting me throughout these times. So yeah, I really appreciate you guys. But anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up, comment down below, and also subscribe to the channel. Thanks everyone, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.